we go to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. And we are going to read from verse 14. Mark chapter 9, reading from verse 14. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately, when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed. And running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And whatever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has, he, has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Amen. Amen. Now we come to a very, very interesting and important uh, teaching in the life of every believer. Particularly, you and I that desire daily to govern our world and make decrees and give orders and give commands. We have an ex experience here. The man brought um, his son to the disciples. But unfortunately, um, they did not cast out they were not able to cast out the spirit. Now, you and I have to address that inability. So Jesus told them at the end that um, you need to fast and pray. So now we have two things working here. We have the father of the boy and Jesus said to him, don't worry, don't worry about me, okay, and what I can do. Worry about yourself because you hold the key, you hold the key to the answer to your son's condition. If you can believe, 
all things are possible. But then, to the disciples, Jesus said, you need to fast and pray. The question is, what for? What is the fasting and prayer going to do for them? Matthew 17, where um, it is also recorded, says, because of your unbelief. Okay, Matthew 17, I think it's 21 or 22. Jesus said there, because of your unbelief. Okay. Because of your unbelief, in verse 20, said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from there to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go up except by prayer and fasting. I'm, I'm sure you've read commentaries where they say some translations didn't add fasting. But uh, Jesus said by prayer, some translations, particularly the modern ones, they say that Jesus said except by prayer. Now, James helped us in, in this, you know, in James chapter 5, to have a clearer picture, you know, of what Jesus was really teaching there. I think it's verse 16. Oh, oh no, no, move up then. Not 16. Um, yes, 15 is 15. Okay, said, okay, for let's start from 14. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And then verse 15. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. So the prayer, Jesus said, said, this kind, this kind is going to come out because of the prayer of faith. And that's why he said unbelief. Unbelief is part of the problem. So it's not that you are not praying, but the, the prayer is not in faith. There is no expectation. You know, I've told you repeatedly that uh, you know, if you pray and you have no expectation, then there is no faith. Because the prayer of faith will always have expectation. You know, you are scanning your world, scanning your horizon, expecting something to happen. That's why the preacher told the story of the woman that went to stand at the foot of the mountain and commanded the mountain, mountain, move. Then she waited a while. And then she said, I knew you will not move. The question is, if you knew it will not move, so why give the command then? So, when you and I pray, Jesus is saying, there must be faith behind that prayer. There must be belief that it's what you are praying for is going to happen. Because without that belief, that prayer is not going to connect. It's not going to connect. That's why it's important, particularly because we pray day and night every day. Somebody must say, this prayer is going to connect. In fact, sometimes, you know, when I'm saying some of these prayers, I'm trying to visualize some areas, some, and sometimes the vision accompanies it. You see some movement that says, okay, at least some, somebody is impacted by this. Somebody is touched by this, you know. So, it's not a matter of trying to get through our prayers. No. It is a matter of putting faith in to say, okay, I'm praying for, for uh, uh, Bahamas. I'm praying for uh, uh, Montenegro. I'm praying for Rwanda. And as I'm calling Rwanda, I'm saying, let, even if it's one family impacted by this, even if it's one church impacted by this, you know, there must be faith driving this. There must be. Otherwise, it is mere words. So Jesus said, 
You see, to drive out these devils, you have to have faith and you have to speak your word without shaking, without doubting, knowing that there is power behind your word. And that power is the resurrection power in the name of Jesus. And all that's why you, we go through all of this so that you have all of this as anchor. We all have all of this as anchor at the back of our minds when we are saying this prayer. There's resurrection power behind this and that power brought Jesus from the dead. So this declaration is going to stick it's going to stick. It's going to move someone. It's going to change something. It's going to impact something. And that's why every day I say to God, I say to God, you have to encourage us. You have to encourage us. We need to see something. We need to see some manifestation that shows that you are, you are, you are, you are moving behind this, our decrees. And he keeps assuring me that it is moving. But you know, like we have studied here also, spiritual things, we don't control them, he controls them. And they all have to work together to bring him glory at the end of the day. That's what he told Moses. I can't do it your way, I have to do it my way. So just follow me. Just follow me. But every time I hear about all these killings, I'm like, oh God, please, let, let's bring this to an end. Watch it no more. Watch it no more. There must be faith behind these prayers. There must be faith. So, um, our Lord Jesus Christ comes down the mountain. The disciples were unable to, to cast him out. And of course, you know, some of those um, scribes and Pharisees are his critics. So they are like, <laughs> the, the, the Omoshe, they couldn't do it, you know. So you guys, what have you been? You know, they were bantering us, I'm, I'm sure. So Jesus was like, what, what is all that banter about? And then the man steps up to give his complaint. And, and Jesus, and Jesus uh, uh, turns around and says to them, um, um, how long has this been going on? And the father gives more history. You know, he's been like that since he was born. And you know, so now from a medical point of view, this is what we will call them. Um, Child, childhood convulsions, you know. Some of them um, persist into adulthood, some of them don't. So I imagine that this boy, um, is, uh, the, the most he can be is a teenager, you know. So, so anyway, um, um, our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's why um, I think it was uh, St. Augustine who said, you must pray to believe and you must believe to pray, the two. So if, if you say your prayers without faith in your heart, then you must fast and pray to believe in your prayers. That's what I, I, I remember I told someone that once, don't you believe in your prayers? You need to believe in your prayers, that your prayers are connecting to the uh, prayer answering center of heaven. So that when you pray, say a prayer, something in your mind connects that says, I have expectation of this prayer. I have expectation of this prayer that is going to connect and is going to uh, uh, answer to the need in this life or in this situation or in this circumstance. So, so this is what we need to do individually to always, always connect, connect with faith. The prayer of faith will save the sick. That prayer said with expectation, with a conviction that the power of God will be released to answer to the need. That's what will save, uh, uh, save the sick. And so, and there is no magic to it. it, it everyone has to do it and, and keep doing it and keep growing in it and keep expecting until bigger and bigger and greater and greater things begin to happen. You know, and you find that every time you do it, you know, uh, some, something is going to happen, you know, and the people may come back to testify, you know, we, 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 we are not, we don't have that habit of um, um, telling people to come and testify. But you know, uh, some places they will tell you to testify and you must testify uh, uh, in a certain way anyway. But the important thing is not about you and I, important thing is the glory to God. 
Okay. So don't don't encourage people to testify, but not to draw attention to yourself. You know. So Jesus said, uh, um, this type, this type, you know, that means every type, every type. And that's why um, you, you understand that there are two forces working here. There is the prayer of faith, okay, released by the minister. And there is the belief, you know, that the, 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 uh, um, um, uh, the power of God will hit the child once the minister prays. You see? And this is what we must teach. There are both sides to it. I am believing, uh, saying the prayer. The, the, the other man is believing, receiving the prayer. You know. And, and, and that's why there's a kind of agreement. And, and um, um, sometimes one, of course, overrides the other. Like the woman that came with the issue of blood. Jesus didn't even know anything was going on. Okay, so Jesus didn't know. So Jesus wasn't exercising any of his own faith. So it was all from the woman. Because the moment she touched the hem of his garment, she was whole. But Jesus, yeah. you know, knew that, um, you know, something had happened to somebody, you know, because he felt the release of power. Okay, so, so, so both sides, both sides, we encourage both sides. The person that, um, uh, 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 is needing the miracle, must have faith in God and faith in his word that it will happen to him just the way the word says. Amen. And the person praying must also believe that as he makes the pronouncement, the power of God will be released to glorify God in the life of that person. Amen. So this is these are the two sides of this. And, and, and everybody can do this because or St. Augustine says, pray to believe, which means when I wake up in the morning, I say, Lord, as I go through this, my day, you know, release your anointing and presence on me that on whoever I pray for, for one thing or the other, they will receive their touch. That is praying to believe. Okay. And then the person that is me, Lord, oh, help me today that if so, if a, a, a preacher comes around and prays for me, I will be healed. I believe it. I have expectation that if he prays for me, I will be healed. So you see, if you have two people coming, both trained and taught like this, then a lot more will be happening when the two work together. You know, the person believing to receive and the person believing to, to, for the anointing to be released. <clears throat> So, so you and I need to hold those two sides. We, we, as, as we minister to people, we'll encourage them to, to believe the word of God because Jesus is behind his word. The Father is behind his word to believe the word of God. And then we ourselves also praying to believe that when we pray, heaven will answer and endorse with anointing. Amen. So that um, um, we can we can get to where we are going faster, you know. Particularly with all these decrees we are making, you know, we need to get to where we are going faster. You know, praying for Nigeria, praying for the nations of the world. There must be expectation as that as I make those declarations. Okay, I release my faith behind them that God is more than able to to shift shift. You know immovable, shift them so that the kingdom of God can come through. Hallelujah. So this, this is what this is about. And, 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 and Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. And that's the real encouragement. You know, with God, all things are possible. But Jesus also said, if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. So you and I must join the, 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 the crowd of those who believe and every morning pray that, Lord, so anoint me today that as I pray, as I pray, oh God, heaven will release the power to move things Amen. and position them. That is the prayer for those who are ministering, who are praying. <sighs> prayer to believe in my prayers. So everything, that's why the Bible said everything is of grace. So I receive grace to believe 
that my prayer will work. Amen. I receive grace to believe that my prayer will work. Amen. You know, I'm not just praying, but I have grace to believe God that my prayer will work. Amen. So let us let us launch into this to shorten the time of this to, to, to so that it doesn't get too prolonged. Let, at least let us make our, all the contributions that we need to make on our own path so the less will be left to God. Amen. Amen. Amen.